always ready to die. And I'm going to, I've decided that I would, should add that to the list. Just a second. I've decided to keep my list right next to me. So every day I have this list and I have two columns. Here's the day. I begin, here's, this side is all the things I want to do personally. Most of these things, right up to the end, I'll have done before I even start work. It's all morning work. And then over here, once I fire up my computer and start my day, I'll list out all the things I need to do on the work side, and that'll take up the rest of the day. So I've just added one. I've decided that I used to do a deep dive on, all, on the objectives and principles on the videos. Instead of, and I haven't done it for months and months, I like to do that. It's important, I think, to do that for the purpose of maintaining the, the creed. I'm going to do that one objective or principle at a time in order. And the first one is to be always ready to die. So I'm going to name it, and then I'll describe it, and then I'll carry on and just touch each one. And then tomorrow I'll, I'll go to number two and name that one and just touch that one in depth or talk about it in depth and then carry on. So the first objective is to be always ready to die. What this simply means is that I want to m make sure my life is at every s moment uh, in a state that if I was to have a, suffer a sudden death, a heart attack, stroke, whatever it is, um, I don't leave my life as an untidy mess. And I don't mean necessarily my circumstance, although this is a tidy room, but I want my, um, I want my all my paperwork to be in order, uh, and most importantly, my our bank information. I do. We make when I have a deal, wherever we're in, either living in Japan or America, whoever is the native of that country takes care of all the finances. So Yumiko always takes care of all the finances while we're in Japan. I keep track of all the banks in the United States because our banking is, our savings are all here. But then she takes care of all the you know bills and stuff like that. And I do the same when we're here. So I have two files over here, and I'll make sure I have one file is for personal stuff, and it's very well organized, no passports, birth certificates, it's all in there, nicely filed away, and then another one is for all of our finances, all of our bank accounts, retirement accounts, uh, um, all past tax records, um, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, that's all organized well, and then I have a special folder up front, and then another one, a piece of paper folded up in, in a special container at the top that is like a cheat sheet. And that's, I, I created that so that if I was to die suddenly, Yumiko or Emily could open that up. And that basically means like, it's like, welcome to the Bell family finances. You know, all of our, uh, all of our retirement and all of our household accounts and all of our retirement accounts are listed, URLs to access them, and then username and passwords to get in, to log in. Um, so that they don't have to hunt and peck for those things. So they can just, oh, okay, well, all of our retirement money is here. <laughs> and I've also got all the accounts set up in such a way that uh, there's survivorship, so you, that there's no fight uh, for Yumiko to get the money, or Emily, if both of us go, Yumiko and I both go. So that's what I mean by having uh, my affairs in order. My relationship sound means that I have no people that I have unfinished business with. There's no one that I'm like, you know, I really should have a chat with, you know, so-and-so. I don't have anybody like that in my life. I've, I've, I don't have any outstanding business. I did for a while. There was one that really hung over my head for a long time, and that for years, for almost 10. That was that when I was in Japan, I worked for a, a school, and um, they rescued me. I, I've told the story before. I won't go belabor the point, but I, I've told the story about how I had my antique business in Japan, and then the economy crash in 2008 wiped me out and then some, and I was nearly homeless with my family, um, and I, w I struggled to get back on my feet, uh, and hard work uh, in that regard led to a job with a, a really good job with a uh, language school in Shizuoka that, and there was one guy, the principal, that was so good, they were all good to me, the principal was great even offering Emily to go to school there for free. I got a great, I was, I was treated like a full-on Japanese teacher with a full salary, all the benefits, the retirement program, the whole kit and caboodle. 
thing. <laughs> Breaks me up now just remembering that. There was one guy behind all of that. And when I left Japan, I was a little muddled in the head. Okay, I, I didn't leave any bad terms with anybody. But I didn't go out the way that I should have with proper deep gratitude. I mean, I'm deeply grateful for being, he, he helped rescue me from my family from, he, he, I, I say me because it was my responsibility to take care of my family. So he rescued me from the, the, the and my family by, by extension, right? <laughs> he helped me, helped me get back on my feet so I could take care of my family and support my family. This was my job. And I was there for four years. And I got, nothing, got treated nothing but wonderfully. And I'll admit, I was, I struggled. I was, and again, it's so good that I left Japan. I'm so glad that I left. Because I was headed down a dark road of, um, I'll save that for another video. If I'd stayed in Japan, that would have ruined me. Now I can go back and I'm fine. Because I, because I left. <laughs> that's, see, that's room for a whole other video I'll have plenty of time to catch up on all that another time and I've talked about it a little bit in the past but I've always ever since I left Japan I've always felt I regretted I felt like I didn't express my proper gratitude to the school and to that man so that was something that was an unfinished bit of business so this last one we went back to Japan in February um, I realized this was my opportunity and I reached out to the school before I got to Japan and I made an arrangement to come and visit and I came bearing gifts and um, I was taken around by one of my friends there a Japanese teacher and I met everybody and I I expressed my gratitude and even apologized for not expressing proper gratitude at the time and I did it in Japanese style and even the, twice the, the principal and the director of the school both commented to me wow you're doing it Japanese style <laughs> I did I made sure they all knew how grateful I was for everything that they did to me for me and my family and I brought bearing gifts for everybody hmm that settled that doesn't mean I'm done with them. It means I'll take every opportunity I ever have in my life to express gratitude if I have an opportunity. But that felt good. And that, doing that really settled my world in a way. You know, there really wasn't anybody yet that I had any unfinished business with. You know, I mean, of course, I wish I, could, I wish I could talk to my dad again. He died when I was in my mid-30s, and I was foolish and an idiot. And... I, I've been, I can't do that. Real true limits and true opportunity. I, that's the next print. That's the next. I think that's the next objective. Anyway, so that was that was the second one to have my life settled. It says my affairs in order, my relationship sound, and my life's work complete. That means whatever I've decided is my life's work. Have that in a steady, in a ready state. Now, if it's a work in progress, then at least it's a work in progress as far along as I possibly can settled. Now, I'm pretty fortunate that. Um, my all my life's work is complete now. My daughter is right. She's my number one life's work. She's even if I was to die today, her I paid her last tuition two weeks ago, and uh, her rent is paid. Uh, she's just she's just glide path to the end next May and graduate and off she goes. So that's done. I mean I'm still her father, but you get the picture. My, my other life's work, which is my book, Going Alone, totally done. There's one typo in there I would like to fix, but I don't care. Even if I didn't fix it, i got to do that this week, maybe today. Ah, I'll add that to the list. Typo. I found a typo. Very rare. It's been, I've, I've edited the book for five years. It's very rare that I find one, but I found, I found one that escaped my attention all this time in the Path of Wildness chapter. So I'll try to fix that. Yeah, that's done too. That doesn't mean that I haven't got anything else to do. I've got the rest of my life to enjoy and support my daughter, but in a different way. And then I've also got the rest of my life to share the message of my book, which I believe is a good message. It yields a, it yields a good quality life. So that's why I do these videos every day. That's why I, I, make, that's why I wrote the book. So yeah, that's what I mean by to be always ready to die. Yeah, I like that. Lock that one up. I did that. Today.